What's going on guys? This is Nate from the Scrub Academy coming you to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. The brand new game released by Konami that's available across all platforms. I believe it should be by now. We're going to find out later on. Um, it is available on PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, Nintendo Switch, and soon to be released hopefully on the App Store for Android as well as for Apple. So this is a brand new game that just came out. Uh, it's basically taking over the world when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! online Duel Links. So it's getting rid of Duel Link book, it's getting rid of Duel Links. Not really getting rid of them, but a lot of people are probably going to be playing this instead just because it's a whole lot better, in my opinion anyway. Um, so we are playing through the solo mode. So solo mode is going to be stories about all the different archetypes, introducing those to the to the world. Um, so this game is great for new players as well as older players who are returning and or people who are just currently playing as well. Uh, but it helps learn the deck and learn all the different types of summoning. So Ritual, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, Link. It helps you learn all of those throughout all the solo mode and you get cards as well as gems that we can actually progress and end up buying cards with your gems and then building your own deck so you can jump into ranked duels. So we're going to be having two different playlists here. If you have not seen any of our other episodes, make sure to check up in the cards. I will have the latest one or yeah, I'll have the latest one up there for you guys. But if you haven't seen any of them at all, make sure to check in the description down below. I will have a link to our playlist so you can watch every single one of our episodes from the solo mode. We will have two different playlists for this uh, master duel genre. We're going to be having the solo mode uh, playlist for you guys as well as we're going to be having a ranked one once we actually get to that point. Um, so there's not going to be one of those until we complete the solo mode. We want to get through all this first, get all the cards we can, as well as all the gems and all the rewards. And then after that, we're going to be going and buying packs and learning how to make decks, uh, construction card, constructing cards, and then actually going and jumping into ranked duels. So without further ado, um, so we do not have enough of the light orbs to play through the Warriors of the Six Elemental Lords. Uh, we can't do that just yet. We need 200 light orbs. So hopefully one of these two will give us light orbs so we can actually play through those. So we are going to be playing the Mystery of the Megalith today. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into it. I have no idea what this is, but we're going to find out. So Megaliths have the unique ability to call forth ritual monsters without using ritual spells. The power of Megaliths open the door to new rituals. So we just actually got done playing through a ritual deck in Ruin and Demise. So we're jumping into another one here. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so with each of these solo mode uh, gates that we're playing through, each of them has a scenario which is basically a story mode for it, so we can kind of learn the backstory of the cards we're playing with. It's just amazing. We've never had that before, but it's really cool that we're actually getting that now. So let's go ahead, we're going to jump into it, and we're going to see what's all about the mystery of the Megalith. Alright, so we've got the mystery of the Megalith. In ancient times, many monumental stone structures were built. Stone circles and pyramids are some examples of this. However, in many other worlds, there are various types of colossal structures. Let's take a look at one of these, the grand stone structure known as the Megalith. The Megalith Ophiel is a white statue that resembles an angel. Her wavy hair hangs down to her shoulders and her eyes are closed in a gentle expression. What catches the eye most of all are the wings on her back like those of an angel. Her radiant holiness inspires reverence and modesty in all who behold her. On the other hand is the black devil Megalith Haggith. A statue of a haggard devil, crouching with contoured limbs, its face hides behind a mask. The only clue at its expression is its slightly exposed mouth. The thorns that are driven into the side of its body inspire dread in the beholder. The sculpture of two children, the white and black Megalith Auk, they appear a lovely pair of twins. By the ship of the wings, the white child appears to be an angel, while the black child appears to be a demon. It's also notable that they wear contrasting facial expressions. The pedestals of the megalith are comprised of an unknown material, not of natural stone. Their distinct features include a heftagonal, heftagonal uh, uh, decoration and a, a pattern imbued with mysticism. What kind of power is hidden within these, ped these pedestals which emit a gentle light? All right, so there's our story about the mystery of the Megalith. We did get three of the Megalith Haggis right away, so that's really cool. And now we can go ahead and we can practice with this and learn how to actually use the Megaliths. All right, so if a level eight Megalith, such as Megalith er Eraton, is ritual summoned, it will have an instant negative impact. Let the number of cards in your opponent's hand and field inform the effect you are aiming for when ritual summoned. If you add a level eight Megalith to your hand with the effect of Senju of the Thousand Hands, and special summon a level four Megalith with ritual four gone, you can ritual summon without discarding the level eight Megalith in your hand. Alrighty. Now I've never actually played with the Megalith cards, um, IRL. So this is going to be fun for us. We're getting to experience lots of decks that we've never actually played. Hopefully, I haven't anyway. So let's see here. What makes a Megalith deck unique? 
All Megalith monsters are ritual monsters. Although they do not have their own dedicated ritual spells, each Megalith monster can be used to ritual summon other Megalith ritual monsters. In particular, level 8 Megalith monsters can perform ritual summons when discarded from the hand to open up a range of plays, and when they are ritual summoned to a field via other card effects, you will gain access to high attack, high defense, and other amazing effects that will push you further ahead in your duel. Alrighty. So they're going to be going first here, end phase, so we're just learning here, we're learning how to use these Megalith cards. Alright, so we got Megalith Phalag and Megalith Eratron. So we've drawn Megalith Phalag. Activate Megalith Phalag's effect and ritual summon Megalith Eratron. So we'll discard it to ritual summon the Eratron. And by discarding the Eratron. And you guys haven't seen these effects yet. These are amazing effects when everything's happening. Whoever built this, all the designers who put their time and effort into Master Duel, amazing job so far, in my opinion. Alright, so we've successfully ritual summoned Megalith Aerotron. Megalith Aerotron is a powerful monster that can ne negate monster effects that target the cards in your field. Attack your opponent directly, or uh, life points directly. Okay, so we're just going to end the duel real quick. Alrighty, so we've learned that you can activate Megalith in your hand, discard them to special or to ritual summon, and then you have, you do still have to actually um, discard the proper level. I thought that it was just discarding activate the effect and that was a proper level, but it doesn't work that way. Alright, so we did get 150 of the Wind Orbs for unlocking the chapters in the solo mode. Alright, so now we've got like four duels, I believe. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So. I think this is the same thing and we're going to be going for looks like water orbs this time so that's cool for us we're getting lots of different orbs we do need at least 50 more light orbs to complete the um, element saber gate so hopefully we can get to that later on so the first time ritual summon monster will be destroyed by battle this turn it is not so this should activate for all of us So we set one and summoned Haggith. So all I did was add, okay. And then portal here stops the destruction. And then you can target one and add it to your hand from the Gaber. Okay. So first things first, we are going to be activating extravagance. We don't use the extra deck, so that's fine for us. <clears throat> Alright, so next thing we can do is normal summon the Senju. Activate its effect to add. And then we can add any of these that we want. So we want... I don't even know what these big guys do, but let's go ahead we'll add one of those. And we'll find out what happens later on. Alright. I'm just going to let you read through these as we go. All right, cool, so we want to discard that, and we're going to summon out Eritron by discarding the Phalag. Hopefully we did this correctly. Probably not, but it's fine. <coughs> All right, we have an extra deck, though. Oh, we have links in our extra deck. Ooh, okay, annexes. All right, so from there, he can't be a strawberry battle once per turn, but we can attack twice into his monster, so that's fine by us. And then this card, machine or rock. So that doesn't work for us, but he can be, he can't be affected, so that's fine. We'll just set that, and we'll go ahead and we'll end our turn. Mm, I had a feeling that I probably should have used something to go with this. Could have used the Phoenix, but it's fine. <coughs> Alright. And he'll have probably... Oh, he's gonna... Ooh, okay. okay.
All right. Go ahead and drop her turn here. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be much adding. Because we can just go ahead and activate the Pot of Extravagance right away. And we don't use our extra at all. Well, I mean, I guess we could if we wanted to. But we don't need to. So let's go ahead, we will Foolish Burial. Get as many of these into the grave as we can so we can actually get some cool stuff going on. I don't think we can summon anything right now. Alright, so let's go battle phase. <clears throat> Do some damage to him. Alright. So these ones have to be summoned with Megalith cards. The big ones don't have to. They can actually get the effects to summon. We don't have anything to get over that big boy though. Why do you even put him into attack position, though? You could just left him in the 2600 defense. Give me a big boy. Don't want those anyway. So when he's summoned, you can add one. He already has a megalith. Start getting some bodies out on the field. Alright, let's go for some big boy damage here. And is this? This isn't game yet. Not yet. Getting close though, look at his field breaking up. Main phase 2. Set that. And in her turn. I guess technically we could start going into like, I don't even know what's left in our link. I'll just take C's. End phase, we're fine. We're just gonna go ahead and finish up the duel. There's our level 8. We've been searching for level 8s. Let's go ahead and let's jump into battle phase. Um, attack for game. Alrighty, so we finished up our actual first duel, and hopefully we've unlocked some of these, and we can actually still we can actually get into them. All right, so we've got 150 water orbs now, so we've got quite a few orbs now. Hopefully we need to get a few more of these, especially those. Can we actually do this? We do not have enough. All right, well, we need fire orbs. Looks like. So hopefully the Pyroxian can actually get us the fireworks. All right. <clears throat> the pedestals of the Megalith may act as a door to another world or a stake connecting another creature. Appearing from the, pedis the pedestal of Megalith Ophiel, Megalith Phaleg boasts two pairs of wings. A far cry from the gentle Ophiel, this ferocious angel is adorned with a helmet and shield wielding a spear. 
Appearing from the pedestal of Megalith Haggith, the great devil Megalith Bithor has four wings. It is a devil of formidable build with, with glaring golden horns. From the pedestal of Megalith Auk blazes the many-headed dragon Megalith Eratron. Its momentum threatens to flatten the earth and to swallow all. It is said all these comprise but one form of the powerful born from the Megalith. But that is not all. Ooh. The Megalith have the power to create a kind of force field even after destroyed. How were they made, and what is the true identity of their hidden power? The Megalith are an entity shrouded in great mystery. The key to solving this mystery may be the truth that emerges from beyond the Megalith themselves. Mystical. Alrighty. So we got ourselves the extended secret, the miraculous advent. I do not want to go to the store. So we can't get into this because we need fire orbs. And we can't get into the other, the element sabers because we need light. Um, what can we get for winning here? Earth chant. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We'll do finish this one up here. And then we're going to try and figure a few things out as we go. See what's happening next here on the channel. This might end up being a very quick episode, but we'll find out. Alrighty. So he's going first here. Summoning Senju. We are playing with our Monarch deck, so not the the craziness of Megaliths. Bring out Ophiel. Portal. For Phalag? Big boy. Alright, so Phalag stops him from being the Shrew once per turn. That's actually okay with us. Um, we don't need to worry about that just yet. Alright, so what we're gonna do is... We don't really need to get rid of this. This doesn't really mess with us too much. Um, but what we can do is activate the Unexpected Die. Activate the Unexpected Die. Bring out one of our 1600 boys. We're going to Tribute Summon and send the Phalic back, and then the portal doesn't even act, doesn't even hurt us whatsoever. All right, so now we can enter battle phase. We're just going to attack in for 24, and then we'll go main phase two, and we're going to set three. We don't need to worry about the portal right now. That isn't really our priority, just because he doesn't even have anything on his field that can stop the destruction anyway. And now he has the ritual in his hand, so that's all he has. He can't do anything. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll activate our Call of the Haunted. Bring out Boy. And we'll summon him there. And now it's Archer. All right, so a 5600. Ryza. Mm. I think we're just going to go Battle Phase here. I want to leave these in our hand just in case we need them later on. 1600, down to 24, or down 24, down to 16. So we've got, we could have done a little bit more damage, but not enough, I think, that would be good for us to actually use. Okay, so we've got Ritual Art here, or Preparation of Rites, ooh, for Auk. So we can discard the Aerotron to Ritual Summon the Phalag. So Phalag is going to get a big boost here, but he can only attack once. Do we want to chain something here? I want to chain the MST, targeting the portal. So Archer, great. Drop a turn. MSC that doesn't matter for us. And we will just go ahead and we will tribute summon Archaeus. And then we'll banish his Auk. There is Auk there. And then we can just go in for lethal. 
GG Alrighty Wish we could have gotten some fire or light orbs there, that would have been nice Okay, so this one needs fire orbs to unlock We're gonna go ahead and leave the megalith area real quick, so we've cleared it This one needs light Our next one that we can do Is just going to be the Pyroxene uh, Warriors Which is gonna be going with gem knights But I don't know, can we see, we can see Okay, so this is going to give us fire orbs, so we can go back and do the other one. Okay. Can we get light orbs? From anybody? Okay, so that can get us that. And then going in here... Into, like, into the megaliths. Playing against this will get us that, and... So we're still not getting light, which is really annoying, but that's okay. Alright, so this is going to be a shorter episode as compared to the rest of them where we were actually able to clear full gates out. Um, so we're going to end it here for today. Next time we're going to be playing the Pyrexian Warriors enough just to get the, the fire orbs so then we can go back and clear the megaliths. So that is all I've got for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's episode, make sure to hit, leave that like, leave a comment down below. And then subscribe, because all your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you are playing Master Duel for yourself, let us know what you think down below in the comment section. Um, I will be leaving a the last episode, if you haven't seen it, up in the cards, so you can go back and watch that one if you haven't already. And then I'll also be leaving a playlist in the description for the entire series of Master Duel solo mode that we've been playing through. But that's all I've got for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Nick from Script Academy, signing up for now. Peace out!